Hello there. My name is Florence Olukemi Akindele, and uh, I'm a Christian. I love to talk about the Bible uh, as it applies to our lives. I'm a wife, a mother, a grandmother, an obstetrician gynecologist by training. I also have uh, a master's degree in public health. So uh, I'll be talking today or continuing today from the previous episode of understanding sexuality from a biblical perspective. I made a point last time that the place, there is a big place of understanding the word of God as it pertains to sexuality. I also made another point that the commandments of God are not grievous. They are out to help us. Uh, if God says, do not fornicate, it's not because he takes pleasure in depriving us of our expression in sexuality. What he is doing is to, to put us in perspective of safety and full enjoyment. I dare say that um, when you understand that God is not out to destroy your enjoyment, we will learn to enjoy what God has freely given to us in Christ Jesus. Amen. Um, the other thing we all said the last time was that sexual sins are different from others because it's not only sin against God, excuse me, but it's also sin against your own body and humanity at large. Now, as Christians, we need to also understand that uh, because we have this innate uh, nature, we've been wired as male and female from birth. We've been wired with the potential for sexuality. And we all know that uh, as little babies don't have desire for se sexual uh, activities just because they have not grown up. By the time you reach puberty, everyone will go through the process of sexual maturity and how to deal with what I call normal reflexes, normal passions that every human being goes through, whether they are spiritual or they are not spiritual. It's just innate, inbuilt reflexes. Uh, I call many of those expressions physiological. It's going to happen anyway. And so we need to know how to deal with that. Now, the first point I would say in dealing with our bodies and how our bodies will respond in ways that we may not necessarily want at that point in time, the first thing I would say is listen to counsel. Be accountable. Listen to counsel. You know, the Bible is full of, uh, particularly in the book of Proverbs, uh, my son, this is what I want you to do. My, my, my son, listen to your father, listen to your mother. There is always a father figure in our lives. It's unfortunate that in the society of today, uh, there are many homes that are fatherless. It has to be, you know, many people are raised by single moms. Uh, there are different circumstances. Uh, some people are raised by only their fathers and not their mothers. So it's, it's, I know it's difficult. But you know what? If we don't have biological family members who can do certain things in our lives, the Bible talks about God being the one that sets solitaries in families. So it's going to bring, if you cry out to God and say, Lord, I actually need somebody in my life like a father or mother, and you don't have those uh, people in your life, God will bring people to your life that will do that role perfectly. Because ultimately, it's about God caring for you. God cares for us is why he, he, he gave us families to start with. And so if the families, for whatever reason, are not fulfilling that role, then God will bring other people. So there will always be somebody to say, this is the way to go, particularly for younger people. And I'll be explaining that as I go on. Now I'm going to read um, from the book of Proverbs to start with. And that, that will be Proverbs chapter 5, verses 1 to 14. It's a long uh, chapter. But I'm going to read it, I mean, it's a long scripture reading. Let me put it that way. I'm going to read it slowly because it's directly instructive. And uh, I want us to take it just the way it is. That's like talking to a son. And what it says here is, My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Listen carefully to my wise counsel. Then you will show discernment and your lips will express what you've learned. For the lips of an immoral woman are as sweet as honey, and her mouth is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is as bitter as poison, as dangerous as a double-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lead straight to the grave. 
for she cares nothing about the path to life. She staggers down a crooked trail and doesn't realize it. So now, my sons, listen to me. Never stray from what I am about to say. Stay away from her. Don't go near the door of her house. If you do, you will lose your honor and will lose to, and will lose to merciless people all you have achieved. Strangers will consume your wealth and someone else will enjoy the fruit of your labor. In the end, you will groan in anguish. When disease consumes your body, you will say how I hated discipline. If only I had not ignored all the warnings. Oh, why didn't I listen to my teachers? Why didn't I pay attention to my instructors? I have come to the brink of utter ruin and now I must face public disgrace. Does this resonate with you? You know, my impression about the world out there is the world out there can make a hero of anybody just like that. Especially because of, you know, social media, internet. Oh, this person is heroic. We should pattern our lives after this. One sexual sin, <laughs> that man is gone. So, what the Bible is saying here is very explicit. If you're not going to end up, you know, the way many people who've been pumped up by the world ends up, you need to stay away from their way of life. And one of them is stay away from strange women. Who is a strange woman? There are many people who fall into the category of saying strange, a strange woman, somebody you just meet for the first time, and all you can think about is sex. You just want to, um, all your natural instincts in the body is, is shouting towards that. You don't know this person. That's a strange woman. You run away. Anyway, we'll get there. But I, I just want to, first of all, to, tell, to, to, to kind of hammer on the point that as young people growing up, you need to listen to counsel. This is one of the counsels of the Bible. You don't want all the wealth you have worked for all your life be taken away by a strange woman. And that's, that's so common these days. People who've worked all their life, you know, created an image, uh, made wealth, let them go through one sexual scandal. And that's it. So, it's safe. To stay away from what may ruin you growing up. Amen. And now, um, it's, it's the same thing in Proverbs 23, 26 to 28. For time, I won't read it, but you can check that out. Proverbs 23, 26 to 28. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. So, let's get it home. We are born with natural instincts. It's natural to feel certain ways. Uh, certain ways when you are with a man if you're a woman and, and when you're with a woman if you're a man particularly once you hit puberty before the age of puberty boys and girls play together it's not a big deal after puberty you need to start learning certain things when you see certain um, um, body reactions come on you that you 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 wish were, was, were not there that's the time to act on what you know and that's the time to act, you know, ask for counsel. Listen to what your parents say. Listen to what your teachers say. As Christians, we're exposed to uh, many people as teachers. Some of us, it will be our parents are Christians. Some of us, it will be our Sunday school teachers. Sometimes we have Christian teachers. It's good to verify stuff with people who have the same core values as yourself. Out there is a lot of information that is Foundless. I would say, as a scientist, it's baseless. For instance, I'd, I'd, I'd uh, said something about normal. Normal just mean, means, uh, you know, a lot of people do it. A larger percentage of people do it. That's norm. Natural means what goes with, what, what goes with the way, call it nature. I would say God. The way God has created us. So, sexual organs are for sexuality the mouth is primarily made for eating mastication that's why we have teeth and tongue and taste so if you want to talk of natural use of the mouth it is for eating and drinking and talking that is what nature has designed the mouth for the mouth 
in kissing gives you a level of um, the sexual dim dimension to it, but you are on the same level. So it is mouth to mouth. Any other thing going into the mouth as part of sexuality is not natural. Because that's not what the mouth was designed for. And it's not normal. Because that's not what the largest percentage of people do. Because by instinct, we are sexual beings. And in all cultures, sexual intercourse is taking place because people are having children. They are having babies. So there has to be one way or the other, babies come. Amen. So I'll leave that. Um, so listen to counsel. Read good books. Don't just get junk information from anywhere that works on in a negative way, your innate capacity for sexuality. Avoid them. Now, the other thing I want to talk about in keeping to what the Bible says about sexuality is use common sense. And, uh, you know, avoid traps. Be wise in your association. Be wise in knowing when there seems to be a trap. You know what? The Bible says, and I'm going to read that first. In Proverbs 3, 21 to 22. Uh, no, no. That's not the one I want. Proverbs 1, 17. In the New Living Translation, very interesting scripture. It says, if a bird sees a trap being set, it knows to stay away. And sometimes I wonder if we as Christians, when we see traps, I don't know if it's that we have confidence in the flesh. But I'm going to go there. So if a bird sees a trap being set, it knows it, the bird is wise enough to stay away. So we should learn from the wisdom of birds. Again, uh, that same scripture in the Good News tra translation says, it does no good to spread a net when the bird you want to catch is watching. watching. Why? Because the bird won't go there. So uh, putting that in perspective, I'm going to read Philippians 3.3. 3. Philippians chapter 3, verse 3 in the New King James Version says, for we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit, who rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. I'm going to sit on this issue of no confidence in the flesh. Believe it or not, no matter how spiritual you are, you fasted, you are, you are the strongest spiritual person on earth. As long as you have your uh, genitals intact and your hormonal balance intact, as a man, if you have testosterone, you're going to react in certain ways to certain people that you know it's, you have to control yourself. You have to uh, rely on the grace of God to help you in that situation. Same for women. It's just that men are more commonly, I mean, the way the men are physiologically wired, they are more commonly, uh, quickly aroused sexually than, than women on a normal day, on a general note. But... We have no confidence in the flesh is what I want to hammer on today. You cannot say that you are very spiritual. You can control your body. And you go and sleep in the same room with a girl that, or a woman that you are not married with. It makes no sense. It's, it's just like a, a bird might be said to be wiser than you in that circumstance. It's a trap. It's the devil's... Um, way of tricking us into things that you, you, you never even would imagine what you can do. So there are certain things that I call traps, uh, youthful loss, situations, settings that set you up to do what eventually you would find, oh my God, I have taken poison. I have done what I should not do with my body. Um, a while ago, while my girls were growing up, there were certain things they wanted to do and I said, no. And they said, why? I said, because this is a family rule. We sleep at home unless we have very important things to do outside. And it's safe. They said, what's safe? I said, you know what? There are many people that are out there who never knew they were going to be raped. Where they were, it was just going to be a party. But it was a trap. And then I, you know, if, if we'll be truthful to ourselves as, as, as adults, well, Children may not know, and that's why children need to listen to counsel. Children who want to venture out, oh, my friends are having fun, and that's great. I love fun too, 
but I love godly fun because godly fun is what is fun at the end of the day. Ungodly fun leads you into regrets, emotional disturbances. There are too many reasons why we should be wiser than birds. When you see a trap, don't go there. It's important as believers because we don't have confidence in the flesh. And then somebody can tell me, oh, you are not strong in enough. It's why you can't sleep with another man's wife in the same room. After all, the circumstances that, oh, maybe you even went on a spiritual escapade. And the only place you can sleep is in the same room with another man's wife. No. That is, you are being more stupid than birds. Birds are wiser. It's a trap. Your body would react. Don't go there. So we are the generation of people who don't have confidence in the flesh. If you call me weak, yes, I know I'm weak. That's why I need Jesus. Actually, that's why any one of us will need Jesus because you can't do this stuff on your own. And so the words of Jesus are words of wisdom. If the Bible says flee fornication, God knows exactly what he's talking about. When you believe, begin to see uh, that you're alone in, in, in a strange place with somebody you don't know and the person is locking the door and, and, and shutting curtains, that's not the time to start speaking in tongues. That is the time to run. Do something physical and escape. Amen. My son, the Bible says in Proverbs 3, 21 to 22, my child, New Living Translation, don't lose sight of common sense and discernment. Hang on to them, for they will refresh your soul. They are like, like jewels on a, on a necklace. That's what common sense will do. So common sense will tell us if you are in a relationship with a, a, a man or a woman whom you intend to marry, common sense tells us you are so in love, you are likely to go beyond your boundaries if you allow yourself into the correct situation. And the correct situation will be some secluded place where nobody will even know you are there, uh, sometime in the dark, nobody is seeing you. Those are the places. It's a trap of the devil. So to avoid things like this, stay in the open. Everybody knows you are in love with one another. Do it in the open. It's not, there's only so much you can do in the open. But if you go behind doors uh, thinking you're very strong, then um, I inform you today, as far as the Bible is concerned, birds are wiser than you because it's a trap. And you need to see these traps and don't go into them. I think I will leave it at that for now. Uh, or maybe I just read one more scripture and I will round that up. And that is 1 Corinthians 5, 9 to 11. In the New Living Translation, it says, When I wrote to you before, I told you not to associate with people who indulge in sexual sin. But I wasn't talking about unbelievers who indulge in sexual sin or are greedy or cheat people or worship idols. You would have to leave this world to avoid people like that. I meant that you are not to associate with anyone who claims to be a believer yet indulges in sexual sin or is greedy or worship idols or is abusive or is a drunkard or cheats people. Don't even eat with such people. You know, when the Bible uses strong words like that, it's not because God is wicked. It's for your safety. The Bible says we should not associate with people who indulge in sexual sin. And Paul was clarifying this to the uh, Corinthian people at that time that I'm not saying don't associate with people who indulge with, in sexual sin uh, who are unbelievers. They don't believe the Bible. They do anything with their bodies and they don't even feel guilty about it. And so we, we know, we relate with such people out there on a daily basis. They are at work, they have different opinions, and that's fine. We relate based on work. We talk and do stuff together. But, but the Bible specifically says if somebody claims to be a believer and is indulging in sexual sin, don't eat with that person. As simple as that. If you are wiser than a bird, you will hit that because those things tend to spread. And I believe God will give us grace as we live this life to be examples of believers who will stick to the word of God, who would ask questions and ask for help when they need help, rather than keep quiet and indulge and keep company with people 
who thinks sexual sins is fun. It is not fun. Sin is not fun. The reason Jesus came to die for us and give us the power over sin is because sin has a wage. It is death. It is not fun. I believe God would, you know, reach you with this message. And if you need help, cry out for help. Amen. Father, I thank you for your word. It's able to just make us good, make us enjoy life like you really want us to. And so we, we rely on your spirit, we rely on your word to do what no man can do in the hearts of people. As we all relate to this um, topic, the Lord, you will reveal things to us beyond what words can do. And you will help us in whatever situation we are. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. Remember that you are really valued by our Heavenly Father. Choose to follow Christ because He's the only one who can set you free. To know more about Jesus, we encourage you to read the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Remember that we share our messages in English, French, and Swahili. Connect with us on our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter, and stream our videos on YouTube. You can find the links to these pages at the bottom of our website. Until next time, have a blessed day.